Hi everyone, it's Az here from Heel vs. Babyface. Just a few weeks ago, it was going so well for Lightyear, the spin-off movie from Toy Story that was set to do a billion dollars at the box office, at least according to Screen Rant. This article here, Lightyear suggests Toy Story will break a massive box office record. And if we go down uh, a little further... It says that Toy Story is one of the anticipated movies to do over a billion. That's a lot. Look at Doctor Strange in the multiverse. It looks like it's going to come short. It's not going to hit that $1 billion mark, even after that rocket start uh, that it had. So if something like Lightyear can do that, wow, what a statement. I mean, it's all Disney, but still, what a statement of the popularity of the Toy Story franchise. As well as Vanity Fair, Pixar's Lightyear is triggering the latest right-wing anti-LGBTQ plus 2IA panic. Conservatives are pushing to erase alphabet people from public life, they say. Oh my God, that's not good, is it? I got told that. The conservative outrage machine has picked its next target and it's about to hit theaters. Disney Pixar's Lightyear, the Toy Story spin-off movie out Friday. Disney works to push a not-so-secret gay agenda, said Ben Shapiro. Well, I mean, if you saw that recent event with Victoria Alonso, uh, she actually confirmed that, that it wasn't such a secret gay agenda and they were going to push 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 and push just like they had pushed bob Iger, sorry the other one uh to change his position on the florida bill instead of being hey look we're just a company we're sticking out of this no uh corporation had to make its political leanings uh known uh, what else does this horrible Ben Shapiro man say? He said, children are not adults. <sighs> I watched Naomi on the CW, and one of the characters said that 10 is the new 16. Admittedly, I wanted to go to America and uh, try and buy a shotgun, but uh, apparently, uh, and anyway, what might be appropriate for adults is not appropriate for children. I mean, it kind of sounds commonsensical. Uh, this is, uh, that, this must be said, demonstrates how society is in a state of moral collapse. Well, I mean, we have had some very disturbing instances in recent times, particularly when you see uh, drag queens grinding up on children in bars with neon lights saying it's not going to lick itself, getting them to insert money into their uh, pantage area. One would be forgiven for finding that to be a little bit too much and pushing things too far in what is a very tolerant society. But of course, this is a society of overrepresentation. And then, just uh, to add the coup de grace of this uh, trifecta of woke, uh, Chris Evans was calling people that don't like or are not happy with the gay kiss in light year, they're, they're idiots. You idiots! Kids want to see gay couples snogging in a movie. Don't you know? Come on. We need to, to force sexuality onto these children. Confusing sexualities, is particularly when they're at a, a very young and impressionable and influential age. But don't worry about that. You're an idiot. An idiot. So what could possibly go wrong? Set to do a billion, the right wing under attack for its commonsensical views there on, 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 anyway. And, uh, and of course, a Hollywood pretender calling the potential audience for an upcoming film that isn't released yet an idiot. Let's see what the Wall Street Journal has to say today. Oh my God. What is this? What is this? Pixar's Lightyear generates lackluster buzz at the movie theater? Spelled incorrectly, should be R-E. Bloody Americans. 
First film from the Disney-owned studio in theaters in more than two and a half, uh, two years earns 51 million domestically in its opening weekend. Well, I mean, what were the predictions? Well, the lowest predictions were between 70 to 80 million. Lowest. Some predictions were trying to push it as high as 120 million. You know, that is getting a bit crazy. But even the lowest ones were 70 to 80 million. So that's 20 to 30 million less than the low ball projection for what it was going to do domestically. But look, hey. It's an animated movie. It's not like it costs a lot of money to make. You know, a bad weekend, sure. Uh, it could maybe do a little bit, I don't know, uh, in the coming weeks. And then uh, Blu-ray sales. So, you know, it'll, it'll get its money back. How much did it cost to make? Uh, <laughs> Jesus! $200 million budget. Wow. That's, uh, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. And if we look at the numbers here, it did a, a terrible 34 million worldwide as well, taking its uh, worldwide gross to 85 million. So even the, the worldwide gross is essentially on the, the lowest bracket of what they wanted it to do domestically. Just have a look at uh, some of these uh, details, shall we? 2016-14. Over the course of the weekend. Now, just to give you some context of that, folks, let's just jump back and let's just click onto this little movie here. A sequel 35 years after the original. Top Gun Maverick. 885 million worldwide, 466 million domestically, completely smashing the prediction curve. But if we just have a look at the current weekend that it did, it was 11, 15, 17. So it's still doing really well at the box office. And looks like, because it's only been out for 24 days, that this is going to hit a billion. We're not seeing the huge drop-offs that we saw with Doctor Strange. No. We're seeing a very consistent uh, revenue of, of money through there. Anyway, let me get back to what I think about all this business. Now, of course, predictions are fine. I don't, I don't, I know Screen Rant's absolute trash, but I don't hold it against Screen Rant for, uh, for speculating. I mean, I'm, I'm amazed that they actually managed to, to come up with a, a theory because uh, I would have thought they would have been putting more time into deciding what gender uh, and, uh, and, you know, sexuality they were that week. But okay, that's okay. Uh, as regards to right wing panic, on alphabet community no things are being pushed too far and there's no denying you know and this isn't any slight against because i actually i actually believe that the alphabet community and gay people are completely different things i think that the alphabet community the lgbtq plus ia whatever they want to call it i think that is a left-wing political organization that politicizes and weaponizes uh the sexuality and gender identity of uh, people. And I believe that gay people can exist out of that sphere and just be, yeah, you know, I, I identify as gay or bi or uh, whatever. I don't, I think it's uh, an attempt to bundle them in, to, to not just bundle them in in an orientation perspective, but also to bundle them in with a political perspective. So if you are, uh, gay, you don't have to be part of the I, I, you know, alphabet community. You can just be completely separate from that. But when we have seen so many recent uh, events going on, 
Christina Aguilera. You know, all the all this talk. Uh, why do they constantly sexualize Pride? You know, we got Pride Month. You know, the most holy of months now. Why? Why is it a month? Why? There's no reason whatsoever at all. You know, veterans get one day. People that laid down their goddamn lives so that Tosspots can write this shit without fear of any recompense whatsoever laid down their goddamn lives. They get one day and a couple of flowers and fuck off. But, you know, overrepresentative, we get a whole month of this, uh, this, this virtue signaling nonsense. And it is nonsense. And only in the West, you know, only in the West does this happen. There is a, you know, there is a, a, a connecting tissue here. But what I think is, this guy here, Chris Evans. Not directly, indirectly, because Chris Evans is the voice of Buzz Lightyear. And everyone knows that Tim Allen is the voice of Buzz Lightyear. And Tim Allen has a huge following, a huge following from his TV shows, his movies, his stand up comedy, the whole job lot. <clears throat> I don't know somebody who doesn't like home improvement. And shows like that but toy story is a generational franchise as in back in the day when toy story came out in the 90s the people who watched that at a young age are now grown up with kids so it's a generational franchise so what they want to do is they want to take their kids to go and see the new toy story movie it's like Star Wars used to be. Now Star Wars is for everyone. It's not. Star Wars is not for everyone. Star Wars is for the far-right crazy fucking ideologues. That's who Star Wars is for. And I haven't heard too much publicity about this Lightyear movie. But I'll tell you what I have heard. I've heard Gay Kiss. And I've heard... If you don't like it, you're idiots. That's the marketing that I have personally heard. So if I was to bring my nephew to the cinema and this was the marketing that they wanted to provide, to break it down simply, it's a political argument. Just because people on the far left might think it's absolutely fine, who gave the people on the far left carte blanche at what is right or wrong? Nobody. It's up to the parents to decide. It's up to the adults who are taking the children to decide whether they deem it appropriate. And there's nothing wrong if they deem it inappropriate. Because this, after all, is meant to be a kid's movie. Without propaganda, without victoria alonzo's not so secret agenda as she stressed and when something has become political i'm not interested when you're flaunting the political aspect of it i'm not interested and i believe that there was probably a lot of people that are just like well you got rid of tim allen because tim allen is a conservative again another political stance so everything has been politicized from the perspective that I see for this movie. So why would I want to take my kid, my nephew, or whatever to see this? I wouldn't. And somebody said to me yesterday on Twitter, they're like, as this is a good film. I thought I thought it was a fun film. That's it utterly irrelevant. It's utterly irrelevant because the simple fact of the matter is they politicized it. They politicized it to the nines. They called people idiots because the uh, Hollywood pretenders are dumb, stupid, fucking morons that need to shut the goddamn mouth and just sit there. Just sit there, Chris, and look pretty. That's all you're good for. Because when you open your mouth, you become a massive dickhead. So it doesn't matter if they made a good movie. They marketed it on political ideology. And getting rid of Tim Allen was a huge, huge mistake.
Because that, I imagine, took a lot of that generational parents and went, ah, now nah, we good. We good. The good news is things are starting to happen. Things are starting to happen and we can see it. Very small, very small things. Things like Maverick, just a film for entertainment value, soaring. Political films, failing. As Eric July would say, we're going to win this. We just got to hold fast and stay firm. See you in the next video. Bye for now.